The next speaker, if we look at Fisher Trotz, it's either 90, 91 years old. And the co-worker of Hans Schultz, Pickler, at Karlsruhe, they go back to 86, 87 of those years. So two individuals cover all but four years of Fisher Tropes history. And so it's nice to have a presenter who is covering that much of Fisher Tropes history. Hans? also for industrial <clears throat> understanding of what's going on. On the other hand, we are more with the, with the details there and maybe what they mean. <clears throat> so, I... This works. not connected at the moment, number four. Uh, let's see, uh, which one are you? The point is, President, Chairman, and gentlemen, particularly ladies, I am very much pleased to be here to be the talk in this relation. And I feel you are a dangerous child. To synthesis gas. To synthesis gas in any regard. Maybe if it's made from coal or from gas or maybe it's made, made from oil. Then it has to relate to the process, then it must be the catalyst. And the catalyst in detail for the one and for the other. And on the other hand, to make the synthesis gas in the right way for the existing process. And I think you are an expert meanwhile about all the items which are of relevance in this regard. So I enjoy very much this, the high competence, well known, but also very beneficial for the company, I understand, but also well known for expertise and competence in the area of the scientific community. So I enjoy to be here a little and talk a little about that. Some time ago, that's uh, some 22 years before, there was a, 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 a natural gas conversion conference in Sydney, organized mainly to much an extent by, by David Story. And uh, <coughs> so we see here, so we hear Jens with Graham, Graham Chick. I think teaching a little about the details of synthesis gas was a lot. I think then in those days he was the, much the expert and he was learning from you in those days. Graham is very great now in the community, he invited excellent teachers and speeches together. And then <coughs> there you see Jim Goodwin and the other champions. You see Enrique Iglesia there. And then you see particularly. David Schwimm, great friends, <coughs> great friends <coughs> between yeah, <coughs> Jens and uh, David there. Yeah. In the late evening in the hall, I think it had been already pretty late, so you have been there with the earnest talks, what's going on in the world, like that. It looks like that, a little, you know? <laughs> something like that. This has been in Sydney, and it's an excellent party in your private home, and the lady being there as well. So just that. <coughs> <coughs> but uh, the, net, <coughs> the, the talk concerns the branching, branching in which I talk synthesis. The pattern, whatever it means, there are a lot of parameters in between. So that's a pattern, it's something that those things together. And which I talk synthesis is a very complicated reaction with many parameters and it's not easy to have all of them under control. There are a number of parameters in it. So some, to some extent, the product composition 
it uh, turns out to be a complication, the polar composition. There are so many compounds, or a wide range, and there are different kinds of compounds. It's one thing even to make the analysis, it's a little problem to do this quantitatively. And then the other thing is obviously if there's a polymerization nature, but it's not a pure polymerization. The individual compounds and monomers are provided, are prepared, they're on the surface, and somehow the overall reaction mechanism performs. So, but we rely on the pol polymerization nature for that. And on that basis, we try to understand what's going on on the for chain growth on the active sites. For that, we need some degree of genetic modeling to develop from those the individual reactions in the reaction system. And we are now interested particularly in branching. Then another complication thing there is that what is in the earlier days being called formulaic. In modern days, it's both self-organization. Initially, you don't have already the, the right order composition, the right rates of this and that, and turns out for a time, maybe half a day, maybe 10 hours, or the week, maybe a week, until you come to a steady state or synthesis. So the composition changes, the catalyst changes, the structure of the catalyst may change, and so on. And this complicates, of course, inspecting, looking for the details of the reaction. <coughs> the other is, then it turns out the structure of the sites. It looks like that some of the sites are of dynamic nature, have a dynamic nature. So this makes things not easier to understand what's going on. And <coughs> then there are another thing in chemistry on these catalysts that is more related to constraints on the sites than accelerating distinct reactions. So particularly future shock chemistry lives to much in the end in terms of selectivity on the constraints for this and that reaction. For instance, to make methane, methane must be inhibited to large and extended thermodynamically very favored. On the other hand, we get mainly the olefins primarily, not the terafins, yeah? But on the other hand, thermodynamically, the, uh, the terafins would be the nicer component. So the, the constraints, the constraints are more covering than selectivity than <coughs> having an acceleration. On, uh, on the sides. And then we are thinking of the monomers. It's still a debate, the debate of the monomers, whether it's a 